All right, so I'm sitting here with uh, Mary Jo Sabo in her office, and you, the name of your practice again is? is Biofeedback Consultants, and we also go by the name Rockland Health and Wellness. And we're located in? In Suffern, New York, Okay. Rockland County. Okay. So, and how long have we known each oh, other? Oh, gosh, Harry. Um, I think we I'm met in 1991. When did you first start with Adam? 85. Okay, so I think it was 1991. Martin, Marty Woodkey uh -huh. gave the first neurofeedback, you get, that was the first neurofeedback workshop you and Adam Crane ran, mm -hmm. and I was at that. And, that's, was and from that moment forward, we became best friends. How did you, how did you get into biofeedback in, in the beginning? Um, it's, that's an interesting uh, question, because back in the 80s, I was doing hypnotherapy. Uh -huh. And I would sit and talk to a person and, and you know, do imagery and visualization and relaxation techniques. And I purchased um, a box. It was a temperature trainer. And you'd put the thermometer on your finger. So mm -hmm. I just knew a little bit about biofeedback and, and I wanted to see what they were doing while I was doing this hypnotherapy. And then I used uh, an EMJ box, mm -hmm. another you know, very expensive $350 <laughs> box in those days, battery operated, right? right. And um, I think I just saw that in your in You your saw office, that. Right? I, I keep it to remind me from where I came. Uh, and I went to work at a very large practice in Manhattan. And having this in my mind, the hypnotherapy and um, you know, guided imagery. It was like in the 80s, just starting to get popular. Bernie Siegel, Love Medicine and Medicine, mm. Love Medicine and Miracles. Mm. His book had just come out. And I was working at the Atkins Center. You remember Bob Atkins, mm -hmm. the big diet guru? Uh -huh. Yeah, weight loss person. Um, and he brought in a very young man who started to do biofeedback, teaching people to do breathing and relaxation. Something like I was into, and I was mm -hmm. kind of doing it, but mm -hmm. not doing it in a large setting. Mm -hmm. And I saw this incredible change mm -hmm. in people that could change, especially like cancer patients, who could raise their skin temperature maybe from 68 to 74. Mm. It doesn't sound like a lot, but that was very empowering for these mm -hmm. people. So um, I kind of got into it that way, and then um, when I saw the technology go from battery to computer, um, it, it just excited me so much. I got mm. so excited, and I, I heard Marty Woodkey talk at your meeting, and I was completely 1,000% sold. It was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And I can remember buying my first unit from you, and you came very patiently. You've always been patient <laughs> with me. Thank you very much for that, Harry. It's all the biofeed. I know, it's all the biofeed. <laughs> and you came into the office, and I think we videoed you with those old-fashioned video <laughs> cameras, right? Um, it was 1990s, mm -hmm. early 90s. And when you left, I remember saying to my husband, who was with me at the time, where's the on button? I, we couldn't <laughs> find the on button, I called you. And from that point forward, I think I called Harry every week asking a question, you know. And and we would make the dumbest mistakes with these old DOS computers, 286 <laughs> DOS computers. And I would always say to, as, as I started to grow and get bigger and added to more people, technician level people to work with me, I remember always saying, never admit it's your mistake. Always say it's the computer's. <laughs> like if something, if you hit the, in those days, if you hit the escape button twice, it would kick you out of the right, program. Right, right. And of course, new people coming on board would always make these mistakes. Right. Oh, these computers. Right. And then we went to um, 386 DOS. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we got 486, we were smoking hot fast. Couldn't tell computers. us anything. Couldn't right? tell us anything. <laughs> so continuing to the early 2000s, Harry said to me, Mary Jo, you know, I think I had seven CAP scans at a PRISM, and he said, I think you should go with the newer technology, and I bought you, I was fighting, no, I love these CAP scans, but we couldn't get any more DOS computers, if right, you remember. Right, right. So I finally gave in and went to Thought Technology, mm -hmm. um, purchased that equipment, and then an interesting thing happened back in the 90s also. A woman came into my office with a little six-year-old boy. And I always say that when I'm teaching people, you never know who's going to walk yeah. in your office. Right. Could be Oprah's cook. You don't know. <laughs> that could happen, right? right? Could be, you know, George Clooney's mother-in-law. I don't mm -hmm. know. But you never know. So you always treat everyone the same. Right. Um, well, this particular woman that came in, her name was Linda, 
and her little six-year-old boy had been kicked out of uh, public school and private school, Catholic mm. school. They said, we can't handle him, mm. so ADHD. And Linda was a vice principal at the time in Yonkers, New York. Mm -hmm. And her little boy, John Michael, went in, I'd say about six to ten sessions. Now remember, we're using 286 CAP scans mm -hmm. in those days. Mm -hmm. Knowledge was basic when you right. think about how far we've come in, right. in the past 20 some years. Um, he, he got better. Mm. He could sit at the table and eat dinner with the family. Mm. He what, Now that may, someone may say, oh, well, what big deal is that? Right. But if you have an ADHD child, they many times cannot sit with the family. Mm. They can't follow simple commands like go upstairs, brush your teeth, put your pajamas on. They, they're, they're all over. They may go upstairs, they may forget to put their pajamas on. <laughs> so he starts to do little simple executive functioning mm. things, you know, one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five. And she became so impressed that one night she asked could she bring the assistant superintendent of schools to my office. Mm. And she did. And so the three of us, the three women, um, decided that if Linda could find the money, we could bring this program to get the Yonkers Public Schools. Well, lo and behold, the way the universe provides for you, a politician got involved and gave us money mm -hmm. from excess funds or whatever that's called. And then somebody on the school board had a nephew in the school who benefited from the program. So it just kept rippling out throughout Yonkers that there was a program in Enrico Fermi School mm -hmm. that was helping kids without drugs. Right. So the next thing that happened was that they invited us to come to a school board meeting, the team, mm -hmm. Linda, myself. Were you there? I don't remember. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, that. we went there and we gave a presentation. And we didn't realize it at the time, but it was televised throughout Yonkers mm -hmm. on Channel 12 or local cable mm -hmm. or whatever it was. And from that moment forward, the momentum just took off. Mm -hmm. And we ended up being in three schools. I, I would say, wouldn't you think we did thousands of cases over those seven years? Felt like it. Yeah, yeah felt <laughs> like it. And, and really successful. Yeah, yeah. We, um, someone from St. Peter's College came to visit. The next thing we know, we're doing research. Mm -hmm. you know, we weren't researchers. We, right. That was not what we were. Right. Clinicians, therapists, right. software right. people. Right. Um, so it just kind of rippled so nicely that uh, C CBS, NBC, Good Morning America, mm -hmm. National Pub NPR, National Public Radio, we everybody seemed to be coming to Yonkers to interview us, right. to focus on this program. Right. And um, we were able to gather data, and we did publish, I believe in the spring of 2001, mm -hmm. in the Journal of Neurotherapy. We published our results. Um, success with many, many, many children, mm -hmm. many children in the three schools. We probably would have gone further with it had 9-11 not happened. Right. But 9-11 happened, and after that, Albany used to bail Yonkers out all the time, yeah. and the money couldn't go to Yonkers, it had to go into right. the city. They cut but funding then on everything, they, they, even exactly. sports and oh, the music. Oh, the plays, they, yeah. they just cut back on their plays. Yeah. Anything that was extracurricular or, you know, you got to remember they were paying staff with biofeedback. Right. Right. Uh, they were buying the computers. Yeah. So they they really cut the budgets yeah. for, all, you know, all over. So right. that was the end of that episode. But it actually gathered so much information and good, mm -hmm. um, good media coverage, right. um, publicity. That after that we went to West Point and did a small mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. Worked at the American School for the Deaf, did a small study there, and then it it you know there are still today schools that do neurofeedback. I think I just had one call me from Arizona. Right. But it kind of goes in the back door. I don't think it has the public attention yeah, I that think, we had. I think um, a lot of times the just the bureaucracy and people not really understanding what it is and being fearful of you know what are we doing yeah. treatment in the school yeah. that kind of thing. So I think that sometimes causes uh, some hesitance. Um, but, I think so. But I think it, it's it's like you said it's definitely still talked about a lot. 
Um, Definitely, I've, yes. In a lot of the books, it's, it's referenced. It's pretty much uh, referenced. So. It was unique in its way. And so it was a big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal. It was, yeah. it was, it was quite an exciting time. Um, but, you know, like one door closes, another opens. And yeah. I was just mentioning to you recently that it's so much easier today mm -hmm. to do what we do. Right. Um, you have the internet. People call you. They've already looked up neurofeedback and anxiety disorder, neurofeedback right. and attention deficit. Right. Uh, the FDA approving the, um, the the brain map in a sense. I know it's software selective. Yeah, they make right. it specific, it's but specific. the idea but is... But the idea like, is that what we right. knew, if the slow brain wave is elevated, you know, you're going to see that in an ADD, ADHD profile. Right, right. If you have the fast brain wave, kind of like the fight or flight response, you're going to see that in an anxiety profile. Right. And that's what I think really attracted me to this field is that you could sit talk, talking to someone and you never know, you think they're relaxed, you think they're expressing things to you, but it's when you're looking at their brain waves, mm -hmm. you can tell if they're in that nice balanced brainwave right. rhythm and that's right. what I love about it I love right. the technology but what I really am most impressed with is the advancement mm -hmm. how we have I used to say remember when I would teach at your workshops I felt like we were in a wagon going across the country <laughs> to California you know we were probably in Ohio back in right, the 90s right, right. you know like we're on a train now yeah. uh, you yeah. know I thought we were the decade of the brain but the more you you see on TV and yeah. you you just we're learning and I think you know we're we need to do, to do it faster of course yeah. but the technology and and what we know about the brain has just changed so much yeah it's like I can't buy the the brain books fast enough they yeah, keep coming out exactly yeah. exactly so here at this center what I did is I found I, I'm really bad when I watch TV you know I found these um, <laughs> brain games and uh -huh. it's a TV series right so it's five seasons uh -huh. I cannot tell you how the people love that uh -huh. and it tells how the brain works and what the, how the brain functions so it's about a 30 minute session that we're doing and they can watch one episode a mm -hmm. week. Um, so they're doing that as they has their, do training, their training, and they have to be focused. You mm -hmm. have to be in that that rhythm mm -hmm. of focus, balance. Mm -hmm. um, if you get anxious, you start to fight the tiger, so to speak. The screen's going to get small. Mm -hmm. Relax, open focus. I think the best thing one little boy said to me is, "Doctor Sabo, when I'm doing this, I just can't think." Mm. Well, what that means is instead of his little mind going, oh, look, I could be flying an airplane out there, teacher, pay attention, right. he's in the moment, right. paying attention, right. Right. staying focused. Mm -hmm. That's where we want our children to right. be. That's where we want our adults to be or to visit Alpha. Right. You know, pl people take substances, drugs. Right. You know, uh, someone may take marijuana because they're always anxious, always fighting the tiger. Mm -hmm. They take marijuana, it brings them down there. Right. We can teach them to visit there. Right. I mean, right. it's really, yeah. when you think about it, you know, I, I think of us in um, the infancy stage of mm -hmm. technology, a mm -hmm. hundred years from now when you and I come back to the earth or something, <laughs> like, what will we see? Right. Um, it's, it is exciting to be in this yeah. field. and I. Yeah. I said that to you before, I really love what I do, yeah. and I think if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. So, so here, what is, what is like the average client uh, coming in uh, for here? I'd say this particular center, we have um, uh, two psychologists on staff and three uh, technician level people that help with putting sensors on. Um, I'd say mostly we specialize in anxiety, mm -hmm. depression. A lot of that out there. A lot of that out there in the world. Um, ADD, ADHD, some trauma. Mm -hmm. But what I've found in this field is that we have gotten very sophisticated, and there are people that just specialize in PTSD, specialize in autism. Mm -hmm. And so I would rather send them to the people. That's their primary focus. Right, right. Um, because there's there's so much more you can learn in this field, right. and so if someone has spent a great amount of, t amount of time on learning about autism mm -hmm. and perhaps different strategies of working with the autistic person, um, I, I like to refer over there. Right. So I like to refer out mm -hmm. unless it's something that we 
really feel we have a really high success rate and we're really comfortable with working with the population that we have mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of leave it that mm -hmm. I will refer out if I have to so I was telling you earlier that what I'm finding now is that the demand is more than the supply mm. we need more neurofeedback therapists we need more people um, to get involved, more mm -hmm. people to enter this field. Right. So, um, well, we're working that, on it. <laughs> that's what I would like to see: more people and maybe some big Hollywood star come in and then announce it on a TV show. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. So, big Hollywood star, if you see this, then you uh, know where to come. <laughs> <laughs> give us a call. <laughs> Well, it was great talking to uh, you, as thank always. Thank you so much. And, it's such a uh, pleasure. Good to see you again. Thank you. You know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> love me too. Take care. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> best way for people to get in touch with you? I think the best way to reach me um, is to email rocklandhealthandwellness at gmail.com. That's the best way. And if you call the office, sometimes it's very busy here, and it's difficult for us to um give you the information that you need. But if you email me, either I or my staff will contact you and give you more information. Okay. And of course they can always go to your website and if you're interested in workshops, Harry has outstanding workshops with um, outstanding staff members. People I think who you, teach. I think you're one of them. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and what about your website? Uh, mine is therippleeffect.org, all one word, therippleeffect.org. So you can look at that also. And, uh, and Google, the best thing to do is Google. I always tell everybody, Google in neurofeedback and my name or neurofeedback and anxiety, neurofeedback and autism. See what's going on out there. There's a lot going on in this field that I don't think people are really aware of. So um, join the train. Remember, I'm not saying wagon anymore, I'm saying train. <laughs> Where do no we get wagons? on a jet plane? Wow, are we going to be fast. We're going there. <laughs>